Host plants are a vital component of any backyard ecosystem, and well-informed backyard ecologists plan to include them in their planting design. While some host plants are famous because of the caterpillars they host, like the milkweed and the monarch butterfly, other plant species that may host several hundred species of caterpillars are much less known. Most of these heavy hitter host plants are native trees and shrubs. Let's get into the list, starting with number 10 and counting down to the host plant champion of Eastern North America. I am also gonna throw in some fun facts from time to time, so be sure to watch for them. Coming in at number 10 are the trees in the genus Pinus, the pine trees. While we often associate pines with producing cones and not as great for pollinators, they are host plants for 200 species of caterpillars, one of the coolest being the alien looking pine devil moth caterpillar. The trees are also used as cover by a variety of birds and mammals, and the seeds are eaten by several bird species and red squirrels. There are around 13 species of pine native to eastern North America. At number nine, we have trees in the genus Caria, the hickories and pecans. These are trees known for producing nuts and not as pollinator powerhouses, but the hickories are host to 213 species of caterpillars, of which the best known by far is the ginormous caterpillar of the regal moth, the hickory horned devil. Not only is the hickory horned devil big, but it is also the largest caterpillar in North America. Hickory nuts are eaten by squirrels and other mammals and several species of birds, especially woodpeckers. While all hickory nuts are edible, those of the pecans are best known for their culinary quality. There are around 11 species of hickory native to Eastern North America. If you love learning about native host plants, inch on over and take a chomp out of that like button. Number eight are the shrubs in the genus Vicinium, the blueberries. Not only are blueberries one of the few commercially important fruits to originate in North America, but they are also host to 217 species of caterpillar, one of which is the bright green caterpillar of the huckleberry sphinx moth. The fruit produced by the blueberries are eaten by birds and mammals, and of course people. As a bonus, the vase-shaped blooms of the blueberries are visited by 14 species of pollen specialist bees. There are around 22 species of vicinium native to eastern North America. Another native fruit comes in at number seven, trees in the genus Mollus, the wild crab apples. Pollinators love the blooms of the native crab apples, but caterpillars love the foliage too, and they are host to 237 species of caterpillars, among them those of the apple sphinx moth. In addition, the fruit is eaten by a wide range of songbirds and game birds, and mammals from squirrels to black bears, and especially deer. This is the least numerous genera on this list with only three species in eastern North America. I have done a video on the native crab apples that I will link in the description. A quick comment on the number of caterpillar species these plants host. The numbers that I am giving for the number of caterpillar species hosted are the total number of species that have been found using that tree or shrub. It doesn't mean that if you plant one in your location, you'll get that number of caterpillar species using it. There are a ton of variables at play that will affect species usage the native ranges of the moth and butterflies, the physical location of the plant in your garden, and are there other plants available that a moth or butterfly prefers to lay eggs on. Still, it is hard to beat the plants on this list for the numbers of caterpillars they host. That being said, there are tons of other native plants that are great for pollinators, wildlife, and its host plants that aren't on this list. They are important too. Keystone plants are an important piece of the puzzle, but are not the only component in a well-designed pollinator and wildlife planting. Number six is a group of trees most of us see daily regardless of where we live geographically in eastern North America, and no matter if it is in an urban or a rural area, the trees of the genus Acer, the maples. These trees are so common in landscapes and wild areas, they are easy to dismiss, but they are host for 238 species of caterpillars, including those of the super cute and fuzzy rosy maple moth. Along with being great host plants, many of the maples are excellent sources of early season pollen and nectar for native bees. I did a video about early season pollen sources for bees that I will link in the description. There are around nine species of maple native to Eastern North America. At number five are the trees in the genus Populus, the poplars, aspens, and cottonwoods. These trees are more common in the Northern half of Eastern North America, but where they are found, they are excellent host plants with up to 249 species using them, including those of the beautiful and poop-loving Red Spotted Purple, which I did a video on that I will link in the description. The bark of many of the poplar species is attractive, as is the fall foliage, which gives them four season interest in the landscape. The buds of some species are an important food for rough grouse, and the twigs and leaves are browsed by deer and rabbits. Beavers love to feed on them, so be aware. 
there are five species of poplar native to eastern North America. I am giving a very basic overview of these tree and shrub groups in this video. If you would like to see a deeper dive into them as far as how they fit into a pollinator and wildlife garden, let me know down in the comments. The number four spot goes to trees in the genus Betula, the birches. The birches are best known for their distinctive bark. These trees are much more than attractive bark though, as their foliage hosts 284 species of caterpillar, including the super cool caterpillars of the impressive Eo moth. In addition, the seeds and catkins are fed upon by a wide range of birds, including pine siskins and small mammals such as red squirrels. Bees also collect the ample pollen in the spring. A birch native to your area makes a great choice for a specimen tree in your yard due to the four season interest and their great use by pollinators and wildlife. There are around nine species of birch native to eastern North America. Getting the bronze medal at number three are the trees and shrubs in the genus Salix, the willows. The willows are host plants for 289 species of caterpillars, including those of the super odd morning cloak butterfly, which I've done a video on and I will link in the description. Willows tend to grow best in moist soils and because of this are often used in erosion control and planting around ponds and other water features. They bloom early in the season and are an important pollen source for native bees and honeybees. In addition to being a great early pollen source in general, the willows support 14 species of pollen specialist native bees. There are approximately 27 species of willow native to eastern North America. The idea of using native keystone plants in home landscaping was brought to the public by Doug Talame in his book, Bringing Nature Home. This book is considered a must read in the native plant world, and if you haven't read it, I encourage you to do so. I'll put links in the description to both the print and Kindle versions of the book, and I will also put a link where you can listen to the audiobook for free with an Audible free trial sign up. In the runner up spot at number two are the trees and shrubs in the genus Prunus, the wild cherries and plums. Best known for the fruits they produce, the wild cherries and plums are also host plants for 340 species of caterpillars, including those of the striped hair streak butterfly. The blooms of the prunus species are highly attractive to native bees, honey bees, butterflies, and other pollinators. The fruit they produce are eaten by a wide variety of songbirds, game birds, small mammals, white-tailed deer, and even black bears, which can be a bit hard on the tree. Overall, they are great trees for pollinators and wildlife, and with around 17 species being native to eastern North America, there is likely one that will fit your backyard ecosystem plan. As a bonus, several of them produce tasty, edible fruit. Before I reveal the number one host plant in eastern North America, I would like to take a second to let you know about the content and products that Backyard Ecology offers. In addition to the videos here on YouTube, we have a podcast, a blog, an email list, a book about plants honeybees use, and a book about how to attract pollinators and wildlife to your backyard. In addition, we offer classes and more in-depth guidance in your habitat journey through our Backyard Ecology community. You can learn more about all of these on our website, which is linked in the description. And now for the champion host plant, and it's not one people really think of when it comes to pollinators. In the number one spot are trees in the genus Quercus, the mighty oaks. The oaks are best known as a source of lumber and for producing acorns, but they are absolutely beast mode when it comes to being host plants. With 436 species of caterpillars known to feed on them, the oaks and really all the trees and shrubs on this list host a ton of caterpillars. Most of them are small loopers, what people tend to call inchworms. And the moths that they become are nondescript, small, and brown, what I call LBMs, little brown moths. These small caterpillars are super important as they are fed upon by birds, small mammals like the super cute flying squirrel, reptiles such as the smooth green snake, amphibians like tree frogs, and predatory insects. The small moths they become are also food for many of those same critters, and for those nighttime hunters, the bats. Larger moth caterpillars also use the oaks as a host plant, one of them being the caterpillar of the stunning polyphemus moth. Of course, the acorns oaks produce are an important food source for some species of songbirds, waterfowl like the wood duck, many game birds, especially the wild turkey, small mammals such as squirrels, to very large mammals including black bears, and of course, white-tailed deer. Since most oak species get quite large, they aren't the best fit in all backyard wildlife and pollinator plans. But when they can be used, they are a powerhouse. This is the most diverse group on this list with approximately 43 species of oak native to eastern North America. The woody keystone species are the most highly utilized caterpillar host plants in eastern North America and should be incorporated into the plan for a backyard ecosystem when possible. 
Of course, you need to complement these native keystone trees and shrubs with other native tree and shrub species and with a variety of flowering plants and native grasses. To learn more about how to choose flowering plants for your pollinator garden, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.